Right, so here we are. We're going to make um, a small candle holder, which you can um, come up with various designs, and uh, they'll fit a tea light. Uh, obviously, that's an electronic tea light. Uh, also, fit a real tea light. Also, um, so what we're going to do is make up a plaster of Paris model and we're going to use this uh, cardboard tube which is from a Pringle um, carton or chip crisp carton uh, you can use any anything really whatever suits your fancy um, this is made from plaster of Paris and this is going to be molded up with latex to make more of them um, and I'll make those out of concrete um, so we pour the plaster of Paris into this template here or that makes our little template and then we can sculpt the plaster of Paris to create our design in this one I'm gonna make a kind of um, wood log looking thing like this one here which this one's tapered um, so uh, we'll get going and uh, start on the first part. So the first part is to mix up our plaster of Paris. So um, as always, same quantity of water to um, the same quantity of plaster of Paris. And we'll mix the plaster of Paris in with the water, into the water and mix that as we pour it in. So give that a stir. And, uh, Stir it relatively slowly so you don't put any air bubbles into the plaster of Paris. I'll keep the air bubbles to a minimum. And uh, once we've done that, we can pour that into our makeshift mould. Right, so here it goes. let that stand for about an hour and then we'll come back and uh, demold the plaster of Paris shape. Right so we've let this um, plaster of Paris set and now we'll release uh, the shape from the tube or carton. We'll do that carefully with a knife. So you've got the smooth side on the top, not that it matters too much. And we're going to drill a hole to fit in the tea light. Right, so we we'll drill the hole. This is a 40 millimeter drill bit, um, which is one inch and nine sixteenths of an inch. So just trying to find the center here. Yeah, mark that out with a screwdriver, get the best we possibly can in the centre. That looks good enough to me. So here goes, and obviously drill down to the depth of the T line. It's a bit gooey, it's still a bit green. Um, so we can wash that off with a bit of water. Got a bowl there. You don't want to be putting this in the sink. As it might clog your pipes up. Right, so we'll uh, get on to the next stage, which is carving. So we'll let that go off a little bit more. Um, it's still a bit wet, the uh, plaster of Paris, but it will be pretty good for carving. 
So let it go off a little bit more and then we'll come back. I'll clean it up a little bit and uh, go from there. Right, okay, this has been let to dry off a little bit. <coughs> um, and now we're going to sculpt in a um, kind of stump wood look. My hole's a little bit off-center, so if you make one of these, um, you'll probably do a better job than that. But uh, anyway, we're going to carve in the stump. I have a bowl of water handy. I've got a bowl of water here. And that will wash off the excess plaster of Paris um, as we carve the sculpture. Right, so here goes. We'll put some lines. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll start on the top and we'll put some rings which is going to simulate wood with a bit of luck. So here goes. Right, so um, I've just um, scraped in the rings um, to give that woody effect and I've just washed it off. I'm going to um, carve in the bark around the sides now and um, we'll just make some lines and we'll refine them as we go through. Um, this is the tool I'm using, I don't know what it's called. Um, but you can use anything really, a nail, um, anything that's handy around the house or whatever. These have got sort of like a ball or sort of ball shaped thing on the end and uh, comes in quite handy. I'm going to use a paintbrush as well to smooth, soften up the lines as I go through. So I'll just continue, I'll, I'll um, like I say, put the, uh, the bark effect around the side now. Okay, so that's where we're at. That's quite wet. Um, I've obviously carved in, refined it a little bit, and um, washed it up with water, or washed the excess plaster with water. Uh, we'll let that go off for a bit. Um, I might refine it a little bit more, and we'll put some paint on it, and uh, see what it looks like. And once it's painted and dried, uh, that'll be ready for moulding. Right, so we've... Uh let this um, fully dry. Um, I let this dry for a few days. And now what we're going to do is just refine the edges a bit with a toothbrush. Um, the plaster of Paris is you can still work with it, and with with brushes just to maybe refine your edges and things. So there we are, just whip round that with a toothbrush. I'm going to fill this hole in with a piece of clay and then we're going to put an undercoat of paint on. Right, now we're going to put an undercut of paint on 
and uh, bear in mind this is just for uh, just to see what the candle holder looks like because this is going to be used as the model for a latex mould and I'll show you what they will look like at the end of the video. So, um, so you can use these original uh, models to practice paint jobs. I'm just going to put a coat of a uh, dark colour just for the base just to seal everything in and I'm going to stipple that in with a, this paintbrush because the um, plaster of Paris is very porous and uh, it's best to stipple it on when it's dry um, because it would be hard to brush on. And we'll leave the undercoat to dry overnight and uh, then we can start adding some layers up. So here we are, we've got um, a few layers of the undercoat on, and now we're going to dry brush uh, some browns and perhaps some yellows, kind of a yellow ochre. So get your dry, make sure your brushes are dry. And you use a bit of black, oh, brown paint, sorry, it was a bit gungy there. Right. So now I'm just going to dry brush this over the surface of the candle holder and hopefully we get a kind of woody look. I'm also going to apply some brown paint onto the top. I'm going to apply that thicker, put that into the simulated wood grain because I'd like this to be a little bit lighter. Right, so we'll let that dry for a bit and then we'll apply some more dry brush layers. Right, so I'm going to put a bit more brown around the candle holder. Get those colours a bit stronger. Right, so there we are. Um, so you put enough brown down, so it's more more of a solid base of brown around the inner part of the stump. Just a dry brushed brown, leaving some of these darker areas on the base coat. Um, so the dry brush brown is highlighting the simulation bark. So we'll let that dry, and uh, we'll put some yellow ochre over the top and dry brush that on for some highlights. <clears throat> right, now I'm going to apply some yellow ochre around the top. I'm also going to put um, some green and perhaps some yellow around the bark. So here goes the yellow ochre.
Right, so we'll let that dry. I put a little bit of green in with the brown and, and the ochre uh, dry brushed on the top of the bark part. And I've also just gone over a few times on the inner part of the stump with just yellow ochre. And I think I might build up a few more layers too, just to bring those colours out a little bit more. I might lighten up the, the ochre with a bit of white as well. So let that dry and come back and do a few more layers. Right, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the yellow ochre and uh, just dry brush a little bit of that over the top of that inner stump part. Also put some of this white mixed with the ochre around the tree stump, just subtly. So I've let this dry for a little bit longer. Um, I'm just going to touch it up with a few highlights. I'm going to change the colour of the middle part of the stump. Uh, it looks a bit sterile as it is. And I'll perhaps um, put a little bit of red with brown and mix it with um, white. So here it goes. Right, so I did actually um, dry brush a little bit of brown over the top of that white at the end, just to calm down those highlights on the bark. Um, so you can see I put a candle in there, and you can see the top now. Uh, so it turned out okay. Um, maybe a little bit rough, but uh, or rustic as I prefer to say. So there's some more candle holders there which perhaps have got more of a refined bark as you can see there in the if I focus it in and um, so yes yeah, so it's up to you how far you want to go with these things there's a couple more designs there another one there so there we are so uh, I mean the plaster of Paris is actually quite hard to paint up so once these are casted up in concrete they'll be a lot easier to paint here we are um, going to uh, latex mold this uh, tea light candle holder uh, we sculpted this tea light candle holder up in another video um, this is a less refined version of the, the other candle holders that I've made um, these are casted with concrete and there's various different styles. This was a more refined, more intricate version. Anyway, for the purposes of, purposes of this video, we'll make the latex mold. Um, we'll make a mother mold too. There's already, like I say, a video how to make these or sculpt these um, original models or um, patterns, prototypes, whatever you want to call them. And also, I've already put on how to cast these uh, candlelight tea light holders from concrete once you made the mold which is what we're doing in this video. Right so first up pour your latex out into a jar. I've got a little bit left over here from another project and uh, as always with the first coat stipple in that first layer so you get a nice coverage 
filling in all those recesses and nooks and crannies. Right, there was, so there we go, there's the first coat stippled in. Uh, try and get those little air bubbles out by just dabbing a paintbrush over the top of that first coat. So it's looking pretty good so far. So after we've got these air bubbles out, we'll wait for it to dry and then we'll apply a second coat. I'll probably put, I'll maybe put 20 coats on here on this particular item. Right, so now we'll um, stipple in the second coat and then we'll start brushing the layers on afterwards, after the second coat. Right, so we're on about the fifth coat here. I put some nylon fibre inside the um, the hole of the candle holder to um, pack it out so that'll make it easier for the mother moulding um, so what I'll do now is I'll just uh, I'll just put in an, another pinch of this uh, fibre to stick in the top there to fill that hole in so uh, First of all, I'll just stick a load of latex inside the hole on top of that last layer of fibre. And now I'll just soak it in this, soak the fibre in this little plastic pot. And I'll uh, just squish that in. Lay that inside the hole and um, just push it in with a paintbrush. And uh, we'll uh, put another cut of latex on the, um, the hole of the candle holder too, so that'll be up to the sixth coat. And then once the latex is dried around the fibre give it another coat plus probably another pinch of fibre just to fill that hole in flush to the top of the candle holder. So there we are, I'll mark that down, that's the sixth coat, so I'll mark that down on a piece of paper. Tally it off and uh, so obviously we'll let that dry. Right, so we we'll put the final coat of latex on this uh, candle holder, tea light candle holder, and then that'll be it um, for this stage. And uh, we'll do another video on creating the mother mold shortly. So we'll let this set for a bit and let it stand for a while. And uh, be ready for the next stage. So hopefully get a video up of the mother mold. Um, the next few days on you by the time most people have seen this the video would already have been up for a while so it's the 1st of September 2017 today we'll let that set and then that's the job done or this stage of the job done right so there's the mold set and dry So here we are. Um, I sculpted these candle holders out of plaster of Paris. These are a bit rough because I uh, made la latex moulds from them, so I pulled the paint off and everything. Um, I'll show you how to make these candle holders in a video which is coming up shortly. So from those casts, we've got these moulds. So um, what we're going to do is uh, the same concrete mixes always. 
So we'll just fill these moulds up into our candle holder moulds. Tap out the air. Same with the other candle moulds. Right, so there we are. Um, we'll cover the, the um, casts with cling film, as always. And we'll wait overnight and then demould them tomorrow. Right, so we're almost at 24 hours later, and now we're going to demold the candle holder. Actually, this is one of the other ones that I molded up. I'll mold all three. So there's one. I'll clean these molds up. there but nothing too drastic. Ooh. There's a third one which is the one we casted in the video. And there we are. So that's turned out quite nicely. We'll tidy the edges up with a Whatever you got, I got a kind of rasp on the edge of this screwdriver, which kind of works out like a file. So not too much cleaning up to do there. So there we are. This um, board's a bit messy, so there's all sorts of bits and pieces, but I can wash those off. these in view. And I'm going to get a couple of tea light candle holders, uh, tea light, um, the actual tea lights to put in the candle to show you. So there we are, the tea light fits nicely inside the concrete candle holders. Plus I got these um, electronic um, tea lights, so I'll just put those in there just to demonstrate. So there we are. Concrete candle holders, all handmade and ca uh, sculpted from plaster of Paris materials and um, obviously made the moulds and um, there we have the concrete cast so we can make lots and lots of these tea light candle holders. A couple of other items to demold there, which a um, couple of ornaments. And uh, so there we are. Thank you very much. And over and out.